What's up guys, my name is Mikey and I'm one half of the Kicks, Vibes and Life Sneaker Podcast. And welcome to Footnotes, a segment on the channel where we look into sneaker news, brands and movers within sneaker culture. Before anything, we want to send out a huge thank you to everybody who caught our first episode where we ran through the five shoes that define the Adidas brand. That's available to watch on our YouTube channel. And if content like that is your thing, please do subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to be notified on new Footnotes episodes, our podcast, and more. Today's episode is going to be about Jordan Brand. There was big news over the weekend as the brand unveiled their holiday collection. Traditionally, the holiday season is always a busy one for Jordan Brand with big sneaker releases usually stacked from before Black Friday to after Christmas. We've had a couple of days to process everything, so we're going to be sharing our thoughts on the collection and our personal picks as well. But before we get into it, let's take a look at another big bit of Jordan sneaker news, the unveiling of the Air Jordan 35. The Air Jordan 35 is the latest shoe in the flagship Air Jordan line. Though it's been 17 years since Michael Jordan last played an NBA game, His signature shoes have pressed forward led by the principles of marrying tech innovation and uncompromised quality inspired by the greatest player to ever play the game. Guided by the aim of reduction, which was the goal of the Air Jordan 34, the 35 builds on this philosophy even further by updating the Eclipse plate for even more responsiveness for on-court play. While the plate itself is striking in terms of aesthetics, One fact that any longtime fan of Jordan shoes can appreciate is how the 35 integrates features from old Air Jordans into their look. That continues a trend set by the Air Jordan 31. From the tongue, the molded ankle collar, to the nod to the side netting, in a way the Jordan 35 brings the classic details of the Air Jordan 5 to the modern era, a testament to enduring Jordan brand design. On the court, the 35 will be worn by a group of NBA, WNBA, and international stars representing the present and future of the game. Expect players like Zion Williamson, Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, Kian Nurse, Go Ailun, and Rui Hachimura to lace them up when basketball season rolls around again. While the jury may be out on whether the Air Jordan 35 translates as well for lifestyle use as the Air Jordans in the past do, We think it's always good to see a brand looking into the future while staying fully informed of the past. Now it's time to get into the Jordan 2020 holiday collection, starting with the Air Jordan 1. Fans of the first Air Jordan are going to be treated to four colorways starting with the Midnight Navy Air Jordan 1 Co. JP. First released in 2001 as part of a Japan exclusive pack of Jordans. That release marked the first time a Jordan drop was exclusive to a region. From what I can tell, the only difference from the original release is the use of Nike Air branding on the tongue instead of a Jumpman logo. Other than that, these look pretty great. If you've been a longtime Jordan fan, or if you missed out on the Midnight Navy Jordan 1 SB Lows, here's your best chance to get a piece of sneaker history as these will be releasing in full family sizing. Though this colorway is said to release in full family sizing, this Air Jordan 1 colorway is for the women. Inspired by Jordan's 63-point game in Boston in 1986, the Lucky Green Air Jordan 1 features matte leather, a raw finish, and patterned insoles that shout out the parquet flooring of the old Boston home court. We've seen a number of Celtics-inspired colorways to hit the Air Jordan 1 over the years, But with a market that's still pretty strong for the Air Jordan 1 in general, the more the merrier. The insoles are a nice touch though. Moving on, this Air Jordan 1 was previously released in 2003 as a mid-cut model. Said to be inspired by a colorway released only to friends and family in the 80s, these black and gold patent leather Air Jordan 1s are now releasing in the original high cut in both men's and grade school sizing. As I've come to find out, patent leather isn't exactly the comfiest material for the entire upper of a shoe. But if you like your shoes with a hit of subtlety, 
these might be worth a look. Now to the last of the ones slated to drop over the course of this season. The Dark Mocha Air Jordan 1. The internet's been saying a lot about these. Using the color blocking of the Black Toe Air Jordan 1, and using tones seen on the massively hyped Travis Scott collaboration Air Jordan 1, it's a safe bet to say that these would be the hardest ones to get all season. Going forward from the Air Jordan 1, there is an Air Jordan 3 releasing outside of North America this season. The classic Air Jordan 3 features are there, from the leather build to the elephant print. But basically, this shoe takes the iconic black cement 3 colorway and swaps out the hits of red with purple and orange, and finishes the shoe with the Jumpman logo on the heel. If you like the Phoenix Suns, well here's a shoe for you. We now move on to one of the highlights of the Jordan Holiday Season Collection, the Fire Red Air Jordan 4. As seen with the Air Jordan 3s that released this year, Jordan Brand claims this release will feature shape, blocking, and details as close as possible to the 1989 original. There's a lot of history that comes with these and I'm very very happy to see them coming back. In contrast to the Fire Red 4s, Releasing outside of North America is this Air Jordan 4 featuring patchwork canvas and twill fabrics inspired by Japanese sashiko craftwork, which was a means of decorative embroidery to enhance clothes back in the old days of Japan. The deep ocean and indigo hues are a welcome touch, and I would imagine these shoes looking even better once they're beat up. Continuing the 30th anniversary celebration of the Air Jordan 5 this year, a mashup colorway of numerous non-OG colorways like the Tokyo, Raging Bull, and Shanghai Fives is slated to release this season as well. The what the concept for sneakers isn't a new idea, and the results are generally mixed, no pun intended. But you know, if it works for you, it works for you. We now move on to a new Air Jordan 8 colorway. Mixed in with the predominantly white leather upper are hits of black, gray, and deep burgundy, a color with a lot of significance to Jordan brand, having featured on a number of classic shoes in the past. The colors do tie together pretty well, but if you're looking out for these, prepare to do a bit of size conversion because these are slated for a women's release. From the 8, we move on to a couple of Air Jordan 12s. One done in Concord purple, and the other a remix of the classic black and red color scheme. Both colorways use suede where leather would normally be on the uppers. Concord purple is pretty low key, with minimal hits of purple contrasting against the black upper. However, the black and red 12s flip the classic flu game colorway, turning these 12s into a very attention grabbing pair of shoes. The Concord Purples are releasing in men's and grade school sizing, while the Black and Reds will be available for the whole family. Rounding out the holiday collection is the Hyper Royal Air Jordan 13. Royal Blue is another one of those colors with deep roots in the Jordan brand lore. This time it's seen on the Air Jordan 13 nicely complementing a black upper with reflective textile detailing. These shoes will be releasing in a full family size run. Personally, I think the collection is pretty strong when seen as a whole. Although some models might not be to my liking, I'm not here to tell you what to buy and what not to buy. After all, taste is subjective, and the shoes I like might not be hits for you, and vice versa. Diversity within sneaker culture is always a welcome thing. My favorites from the collection are the Code JP ones and the Fire Red fours. I've never owned a pair of Fire Reds in my life, so I'm going to be shooting my shot to secure a pair. The same goes for the Midnight Navy Code JP ones. The story behind them goes nicely with my long-standing affinity for Japan and Japanese culture, but that's another story for another day. Which pairs do you like from the Jordan Holiday Collection? Which ones are you going to be trying to get? 
let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, please do hit like, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell to be the first to know when we release new episodes of the podcast, footnotes, and more sneaker content. Once again, my name is Mikey. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.